Hello everyone, today we will discuss science process skills. Are you good at observing things around you? How do you prepare for the weather? How will you know if weather will be fine? Can you tell if it is going to rain so you can bring an umbrella? You will be able to answer these questions by observing the condition of the atmosphere and predicting what will happen next. Observing and predicting are science process skills. You will also use other skills like communicating and inferring in studying nature. These skills are needed by scientists to do their work. As a student in science, you will also work the way scientists do. What are the basic science process skills? First, observing. Second, inferring. Third, classifying. Fourth, measuring. Fifth, predicting. And then the last one, we have communicating. As you progress in age and grade level, you become skillful in the use of different basic science processes to learn about things. When you were in your lower years, you were asked to observe several familiar things around you. You learn that observing is a science process skill used in gathering information about objects and events. Observations are statements of what you see, taste, smell, hear, and feel. Here are some examples of observations using your five senses. First, your sense of sight can identify color, size, and shape. Next, your sense of taste can identify sour, bitter, spicy, sweet, salty, and pungent. Next is our sense of smell. Sense of smell can identify pleasant smell. It could be flower scent, lemon scent, orange scent, or any scent that pleasant to our smell. And another one is unpleasant smell. It could be a dead animals, rotten animals, or food, or plants, and even the garbage odor. Next one is your sense of hearing. Sense of hearing can identify a loud sound. Examples, those are the bang of canyon or firecrackers, roar of lion, siren of police car or ambulance, thunderstorm, and etc. Another one is the soft sound. It could be the hiss of snake, sound of raindrops, ticking of clock, or even your heartbeat, and etc. Next, your sense of touch. Sense of touch can identify either smooth or rough, hard and soft, cold and hot, dry and wet. There are two types of observation. First, the qualitative and quantitative observations. When we say qualitative observations, these are made using your senses and they are descriptive. Example, look at the picture. That picture is a taro plant. Now, we will use our five senses in order to describe this plant using your qualitative observations. First, the taro leaves are green. I underline the word green. It is because I'm using my sense of sight. Okay, next, they are waxy and smooth. I underline the word waxy and smooth. It is because I use my sense of touch. Okay, so don't forget when we say qualitative observation, you must use your five senses. Okay, let's move to quantitative observations. When we say quantitative observations, it's involving numbers or quantities. Tools like the balance, ruler, 
meter stick, and measuring cup are used in gathering quantitative observation. Example, kindly look at the picture please. This picture is a hibiscus plant or gumamella plant. Now, look at my sentence. We will use our quantitative observation. Okay. The flower of hibiscus plant has five petals. Each petal measures 9.2 centimeters in length. I underline the words five petals measures 9.2 centimeters in length. It is because it involves numbers and quantities. So don't forget, when you use your quantitative observation, put in your mind that you must use numbers and quantities. People often complain about their weight when they step on a weighing scale. Parents tell their children how tall they have grown after measuring them up with a meter stick or a tape measure. Are these statements accurate? In science, exact observations about height, length, and weight are gathered by measurement. Measuring use tools and instruments to find out how long, how heavy, or how much something is. Or shall we say, measurement is a way of comparing things. It helps us give better observations about the things around us. You can gather quantitative observations about a material using measuring tools. Here are some tools used in measurement. Examples, tape measure, ruler, meter stick. Distance or length is measured using a tape measure, meter stick, and ruler. Units like millimeter, meter, or kilometer measure distance or length. Another example. Market weighing scale, bathroom scale, digital weighing scale. Mass measures the amount of matter in an object using a balance. Milligram, gram, and kilogram are units used to measure mass. Another measuring tools. Measuring cup, medicine dropper, measuring spoons, graduated cylinder. Volume is the space an object occupies. Milliliter and liter are units used to describe volume of liquids, while cubic centimeter or cubic meter are units used for volume of solids. Next, clinical thermometer and laboratory thermometer. Temperature measures how hot or how cold an object is. Temperature can be measured using a thermometer. The units to describe temperature are degree Celsius, degree Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. And then the last one examples, alarm clock, stopwatch, wrist watch, calendar. Time can be measured using a clock or calendar. The units for time are seconds, minutes, days, months, and years. Look at the shelves of grocery goods in the picture. In which shelf would it be easier to find the item you are looking for? Goods in grocery stores, beans in dry goods stores, and vegetables in the market are sold separately. And in groups, these materials are classified into groups. So our next science process skills is classifying. Classifying is the skill of grouping objects or phenomena according to common characteristics. The reason for grouping things is known as criterion. Things may be classified according to size, weight, color, texture, shape, taste, use, and other properties. Look at the figure on how objects can be classified. Flying birds, walking ducks, Cows eating grasses everywhere, wild plants with violet flowers, sunflower plants with yellow flowers can be classified based on kinds of living things. This kind of living things can be grouped into two groups. It could be plants and animals. So let's talk first the plants. Plants include sunflower plant, wild plant, and grass and can be classified based on their 
presence of flowers. Presence of flowers may be grouped into two because it could be with flower or without flower. With flower would be the sunflower and wildflower, while the no flower would be the grass. So let's go to the animals. May include duck, bird, and cow. Can be classified based on how they are born. How they are born because they could be classified into two groups again. It could be born alive and hatch from egg. Let's talk about the born alive. Born alive, it could be the cow, while hatch from egg, it could be the duck and bird. This is how will you classify. So don't forget that every set of objects are often grouped into subsets of related objects. And each of these subsets is subdivided until each kind of item has been sorted into a separate category. Each level of the classification chart is based on a specific characteristic. See how the dog, bird, and cow are classified. You can classify them based on their body covering. Is there another way of classifying them? Of course, yes. Dog, bird, and cow can be classified according to their body covering. And it could be feather and hair. For example, of the feather, that would be the bird and the dog, while the hair is cow. As you notice, classification is based on how much you know about the things being classified. Before you can classify things, you must be able to note their similarities and differences. For example, compare and contrast cow and duck. Similarity, both are animals. Differences, a cow is born alive and has hair, while a duck is hatched from an egg and has feathers. Take note that you can compare and contrast these animals using a Venn diagram. What is a Venn diagram? Venn diagram consists of circles that overlapping each others. So as you can see, I use only two circles. Now, in these circles, there are three sections. First, middle, and then the last. For the first section, that would be under for the dock. And then for the last, that would be for the cow. So in this both section, we will talk about the differences of this animal. First, for the dock hatch from egg and has feathers while the last section for the cow born alive and has hair how about the middle the middle it will talk about the similarities of these animals so therefore our answer would be animals so this is how venn diagram works the next science process skills is inferring Inferring is the skill of making a wise interpretation of a set of observation. You can make a good inference if you keep past observations in mind to support it. An inference is an explanation of your observation. If you can still remember, in observing, you describe what you see, hear, taste, feel, or smell. While in inferring, you interpret what you think about what you see, hear, taste, feel, or smell. So you can see now what is the difference between observing and inferring. Okay, let's practice our observing and inferring skills. I want you to look at the picture carefully because later I will be providing a different statement regarding with this picture and then we will answer those statement if it is observing or inferring are you ready okay let's start there are four students in the room what would be your answer observing or inferring okay it is observing number two they are from the class 6E. Observing or inferring? 
Mm -hmm. It is inferring. Next, there are laboratory instruments on the table. The answer is observing. Next, a girl is transferring liquid from the test tube to the beaker. It's the answer. Observing. Five, she is measuring the liquid in the beaker. It's the answer. It is inferring. Six, the boy is counting the fishes in the aquarium. Observing. He is interested in fishes. What's the answer? Inferring. And eight, the students are performing an experiment. Inferring. Okay, take note that when you observe, you describe what you see, hear, taste, feel, or smell. But when you infer or using your inferring skills, you interpret. Interpret what you think about, what you see, hear, taste, feel, or smell. What do you think will happen if it rains continuously for several days? This question is asking you to make a prediction. Based on news reports, observations, or past experiences, flooding is caused by continuous rainfall. The fifth science process skill is predicting. Predicting is using one's knowledge to make an intelligent guess about what will happen next. You can make better predictions if you know many things about the object or event you are working on. Predictions are made by searching for a pattern about what has happened. Predicting involves making inference about future events based on current evidences and past experiences. You may verify whether a prediction is correct by performing an experiment. Okay, example pattern. Your current observations plus past experiences. And then out of it, make inferences about it. And then the last one, future events may be verified by performing experiments. Example, ice turns to liquid, heat causes ice to melt, and ice will melt on the table. Another example, plant wilts, plant need water, and then the last one, plant will die if not watered regularly. So, this is how you do it using your predicting skills. Take note that use your knowledge of science and your past experiences to form an idea of what you expect a result will be. Our last science process skills is communicating. Communicating is sharing ideas and information about what you discovered in science. You can share information by showing a table, chart, or graph by writing a report or by reporting orally. Scientists usually write a report and publish them in journals, magazines, or newspapers to share their work to the public. They share information, data, findings, and opinions that became sources of knowledge. There are many ways of communicating in science. These include written or spoken words, drawing and illustrations, tables and charts, graphic organizers, and graphs. For written or spoken words, these are used in journals, articles, internet, or delivered on meetings, lecture, or symposia. Communication becomes more effective if qualitative and quantitative observations are used. Next, drawings and illustrations. Illustrations can help you understand and describe your observations more. Kindly look at the picture. This is how meteorologists communicate information about the weather. For the table and charts. Tables and charts are also useful in recording and presenting your data and observations. Example, 
This is the table. This is the flow chart. Next, graphic organizer. Graphic organizer are tools to systematically present different data and how each relate to one another. Example, cost effect web, concept map, and Venn diagram. We will include also graphs. Example, line graph, bar graph, and pie chart. Okay, that's all for today. See you on the next video.